doing so within the <coughs> at-risk community. Now we have the largest at-risk community, probably, let's say, per square mile uh, in the greater Manchester area, probably compared to anywhere else in the US. But it's finite. And that means that only certain things are achievable at this time. But there's a sequence of tipping points that we will be hitting as we scale and I think those tipping points accelerate. So let's say with 200 people, if you're an agorist barber, and there's a very talented agorist barber in Manchester, and she does maybe say a dozen haircuts uh, every week or every month for various people, um, which incidentally would not be profitable if you had to actually visit the person's home, but because she hangs out at the Libertarian Community Center, um, it makes it economically feasible because other people just have to go there, which they often go to anyway, so they schedule an appointment for the clinic. <coughs> So that was that was that was uh, having the center in that sense is key for lowering the transaction overhead for that particular industry of haircut. But still, it's only a side business. She could not operate full time and pay her bills as a barber. But with 500 or 700 people, she might. So that means that when we get to that certain scale of total number of people, we hit that tipping point where she can now be a full time agorist barber, and that's great. Now. Um, each industry or each profession probably has a different tipping point. I don't know what a doctor would be. Uh, doctors obviously make more money per client, so maybe you need less clients. Um, but if you're running, say, a restaurant, you might need a thousand people, especially if it's this particular kind of food, because not everyone's going to want to eat Ethiopian every single day. So if you had a secret Ethiopian restaurant that was only catering to agorists, you'd probably have to wait a while before they can do that. But the point is, we're already really big, and it's only going to keep growing faster and faster. So essentially what I'm saying is, come to New Hampshire and especially come to Manchester, right? Because that's what the reform is all about. It's all about what the Free State Project can accomplish and why you should be coming here. Um, so that's, that's sort of how I see the growth of the counter economy in that sense. Now the other thing is currency. Um, and Gresham's Law has already been covered, which is great. Um, the laws are laws because they have the final say in the long term, but they don't always have the final say in the short term. Um, the whole point of the Free State Project is that we can, through our irrational exuberance, our passion for liberty, in the short term, make the water go back up the river. We can make government get smaller, even though it is a natural law that government always gets bigger and more tyrannical. Um, the same is true of Gresham's Law. Through our irrational exuberance for liberty, a lot of us use silver, even though it makes no sense to use silver. If you get paid in dollars, uh, and, make, and the person accepts both dollars and silver, why would you go out and trade dollars for silver and then buy the product in silver? You just buy the product in dollars. But the irrational exuberance is there, so we just need to bring the difficulty below the level of irrational exuberance, not below the level of Russian. And I think the key to doing that is to complete the circuit. If you're getting paid in silver, and if you can pay in silver, then it starts to make sense. So we already have a lot of porcupines that own property and rent out rooms or apartments to other porcupines. That's an opportunity to pay the rent in silver or partially in silver. It could be a fraction, and we can grow that fraction over time. Um, most agorists pretty much work for themselves, but let's say you get really successful and you hire someone to start doing shipping and delivery work. Now you are employing, uh, we have porcupines employing porcupines, which means you could pay them in silver. Maybe they prefer to get paid in silver, or maybe you just think it's fun, so you want to do it, and it's worth the effort of acquiring silver. Um, but if you're getting paid in silver, you've already got silver, so you can spend it in silver. We have to complete that cycle. And it's a tricky thing because the cases where that makes sense are few and far between. Like, even if you own an apartment building, and you're renting out the porcupines, and they want to pay you in silver, if you have a mortgage, then you still pay the mortgage in cash. But if you're fairly well off, and you like to accumulate $1,000 in silver every month just for savings, you might as well have that silver coming from your rent as opposed to other sources, and then you can afford to let people pay you in silver. Although it starts with just inches and toe holds in the beginning, it can grow pretty quickly with scale, and it will accelerate it. It's extra linear, it's, it's uh, exponential. Um, so I'm not sure exactly where we are in the exponential curve. People like to overstate where they are in the exponential curve. I don't want to do that. Um, but we're definitely already starting to see some fun stuff, if not world-changing stuff. And I don't think we're more than a, a year or 
or two away from some really practical stuff, if not world changing stuff, or maybe five to ten years away from world changing stuff. Uh, but we can have a lot of fun and we can make profit and we can do so in the agora um, in the very near term. Um, so keep moving in the direction. <laughs> uh, I guess questions.